To talk about it is our medical contributor, Northwestern Medicine physician, Dr. Lauren Stryker. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good so, morning. So let's start out with these new colon cancer screening guidelines. Yeah, well, it turns out that 45 is now the new 50 when it comes to colon cancer screening. And, you know, a lot of people, it's been in the news, of course, a lot of media coverage of colon cancer because there was the recent death of actor Chadwick Boseman. And it wasn't just that he was a celebrity that died from colon cancer that was so striking. It's that he was so young. He was only 43 when he died. He was 39 years old when he was diagnosed. And it turns out that over the last 15 years, there has been an alarming upward trend towards young people being diagnosed with colon cancer. And in fact, it's projected by the year 2030 that colorectal cancer will be the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in young people 20 to 49. So as a result of all of this, there has been a change in the guidelines. And the United States Preventative Services Task Force, who's, who sets all these guidelines, just changed the guidelines for colon cancer that said that initial screening in low risk, and that's important, in low risk people with no symptoms, they should get their first colonoscopy at age 45, not at age 50. Now, the American Cancer Society, a lot of gastroenterologists, they've been kind of pushing this for years, but now it's official. And the reason that it's important that it's official is, is twofold. One, it's going to increase awareness um, that colon cancer can occur at younger ages, so that not only people will get screened, but hopefully they'll be more aware of symptoms. But most important, insurance will likely cover it, you know, because before, since the guideline was 50, if you wanted to get screened before that, unless you had an answer, unless you had um, symptoms, your, your insurance companies just wouldn't cover it. So now, this should save a lot of lives. But I also want to emphasize that even if you're in your 20s or your 30s, if you have symptoms that might indicate colon cancer, you get it checked out. And certainly if you have a family history or other high risk issues. All right, blood tests for 50 cancers coming soon. <laughs> Yeah, this is almost sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? So this is um, a test that's called the Galeri, G-A-L-L-E-R-I, the Galeri blood test. It is already available in the UK, but it is coming to the United States soon. So I wanted everyone to know about it. And basically what it is, is this is a test, which is a screening test. It is intended for adults over the age of 50 who are at the highest risk of cancer. And it's meant to not replace other screening tests. This isn't instead of your pap test, it's not instead of their colonoscopy, but it's to facilitate those screening tests and also to look for cancers that we can screen for, things like pancreatic cancer, or ovarian cancer. And the way that it works is using your blood, it detects DNA sequences that are cancer signals, which then will lead physicians to do further testing. But what's really interesting is not only does it detect certain kinds of cancers, but it also predicts what organ that cancer is in. So how good is this test? Well, it's actually pretty good. The false positive rate, meaning it was positive, but there was no cancer there, was less than 10%. And the sensitivity, meaning how much cancer did it pick up, was 67% for the 12 most common cancers. But this is what's really interesting. When they did detect a cancer, they were able to detect what organ it was in 90% of the time. Let me just now, say this, this though, when you say less than 10% seems like a lot of people getting a false positive. That would scare a lot one, of people. One, I said 1%, one, 1%, one percent, one percent. but Robin, that's exactly the point, is a lot of people are saying too soon, this is not ready yeah. for prime time, that we're gonna you know, get false positives and people are gonna get unnecessary testing or they're gonna get um, you know, really anxious. And on the flip side, if someone gets a negative, there's still a chance they have cancer and they might get falsely reassured and not get the typical screening tests like pap smears and colonoscopy. So so, Robin, that's exactly the point, is there are a lot of critics that are saying, not so fast. But it is coming. It is getting rolled out. West Coast first should be here pretty soon. So people just need to know about it. But also, like every other screening test, know its limitations. So, wait, did you say it's less than 1% or less than 10%? You said 10%. Less, less, I, then I made a mistake. Less than 1%. Less than 1%. It's actually 0.7% false positive, oh, which is okay. quite low. But when you test enough people... Gotcha. Got it. Yeah. All right. New study. Majority of women in the U.S. now experience urinary incontinence. Yeah. You know, uh, 
everyone always thinks that having involuntary loss of urine, urinary incontinence is something that only grandma has, and that's just not the case. And my mantra has always been that about 30% of women will experience urinary incontinence at some point in their life. But a new study shows that that number has gone up. It's now over 50%, and it's younger women, younger women. And when we look at the younger women who are 20s, 30s, 40s, most of them have stress incontinence. They have cough, we have sneeze incontinence. And then as women get older, they start to have more of that urge incontinence. They got to go to the bathroom, they're not going to make it, key in the door incontinence. So as a result, we now have more adults wearing diapers than babies. This is a huge industry, um, of course, a lot of people are making a lot of money from this. There's this normalization of diapers. So my message is, is we got to pay attention to these numbers. Um, common is not the same as normal. It's not normal for adults, all adults to be walking around wearing diapers. And there are solutions. There are solutions to not having to lose urine. Um, medication is far from the first solution. You know, a lot of these are pelvic floor problems. So pelvic floor physical therapy really works. Um, there's an over-the-counter device, a chain that I've talked about before that people can do at home to strengthen those muscles. Um, in, my, in my book, Slip Sliding Away, I talk about solutions for postmenopause women who are having incontinence. But the point is, is that there are solutions. The numbers are going up and up and up. So yes, if you're experiencing this, you're not alone, but you also need to know that you can, you can fix it. All right, thank you. For more information, you can go to 